Why How to Train Your Dragon 3 Changes Everything It's obvious How to Train Your Dragon 3 changes everything we knew about the previous two entries. But watch out because we have many spoilers ahead. You have been warned. Fans of the first two movies were all blown away by the third entry just because of how the movie changes everything. And honestly, so were we. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before we hop into the video, remember to subscribe and turn notifications on. Also, don't forget to leave a like and comment down below saying you did so, and we will try to respond to as many of you as we can. Saying goodbye. Starting off, let's get right into the big details. At the end of the third movie, everyone in Burke finally says a final goodbye to their dragons until the world is ready to bring dragons back into their lives. This is a huge revelation for these films. The lifestyle of the beloved cast of characters is heavily changed by this for so many reasons. Hiccup, Astrid, and the whole bunch of other characters have to now live their lives without the blessing of having dragons on their side. For the past couple of years, these characters have obviously lived in harmony with the dragons, but that's no more. The story of the three movies goes entirely full circle from the first one when dragons were killed and hated, to the opening of the second movie where they were loved and seen as allies, and lastly in the third one when the dragons are let free to go live a life of their own safe and away from humans. It's heart-wrenching to see Hiccup say goodbye to his best friend after all these years, but it is best for the dragon race to live a life of their own without serving the Birkins. It's best for the humans and the dragons, really. Saying goodbye to a best friend for many years is already a really sad thing to do, but when we consider that Hiccup didn't really have many friends to begin with and he was bullied for being a kid who didn't want to kill dragons, it makes it even worse. He had to say goodbye to the greatest friend of his life because he knew if he was let go, he would be able to live a much better life on his own. Letting go of someone is a very mature thing to do and it shows us how Hiccup's character has truly developed after all these years. As for the rest of the characters, they also had to say goodbye to each of their dragons that they had known and loved. It must have been a really tough time for this set of characters to let their friends of several years go. No matter the case, we can always hope that they will get to make visits to see their dragon friends again years later. Hiccup's kids. Yet another big point is that Hiccup and Astrid even have two children at the end of the movie, a little boy and girl that are mirror images of Astrid and Hiccup. It's pretty cute, actually. The entire trilogy has come full circle up until this point and ends in a very wonderful way, in our opinion. The kids are going to live a very different life than their parents, and they're living without dragons until Hiccup decides to introduce them to Toothless yet again for a heartfelt reunion, as well as possibly showing their children other dragons. The thought of Hiccup and Astrid even dating in the first film was preposterous, but now they've gotten to the point of kids, and if you have seen the kids, you know how adorable they really are. As we stated, the life of these kids is going to be so very different than the citizens of Burke have lived in the past years. Dragons are going to be absent for most of their life, if not all of it, which is something Burkeans haven't really had experience from what we've seen. One thing that we can say for certain is that Hiccup's dad, Stoic the Vast, would be proud of his son, that's for sure. Hiccup has become a mirror image of his father at the end of the third film, which is something almost everybody thought was impossible. Considering how much of a weak, skinny kid everyone saw him as in the opening of the first movie, he made big changes. So much has changed, it's insane. Relationships Another big aspect that How to Train Your Dragon 3 changes is the relationships of all the characters. The main relationship involves Hiccup and Astrid finally tying the knot and getting married. This scene was long awaited by fans and definitely did not disappoint. Hiccup and Astrid mirror Toothless and the Light Fury. The best friends have now got girls of their own. On the other hand, one of the weird relationships in this movie is how Snoutlout constantly tries to impress Hiccup's mother. Let's just say we aren't judging. Not too harshly. Anyways, despite his attempts to impress her, she doesn't seem very impressed and even at times doesn't realize he's flirting with her. He doesn't appear to know how to flirt with girls at all, just like several of the other characters in the movie. But do Hiccup's mom and Snoutlout secretly hook up after the movie ends? That's up for a lot of debate. 
As for Roughnut, Tough Nut's sister, she has always been flirty, as seen in the second film with the former villain, Eret. She's always seen flirting with anyone and everyone she can get her mitts on, and at the end of the movie, she seemingly set up to date fish legs. After all, she does love sensitive guys. There are probably other relationships going on within Burke that the film doesn't show us, as there is a ton of other characters within the universe of these films. Regardless, How to Train Your Dragon 3 is just full of new and developing relationships. It's actually very interesting. Delving a little deeper, in the movie, Hiccup is even taught lessons on how to impress his girl by Tough Nut. However, Tough Nut's not exactly the best wingman, although he surely tries. Tough Nut may or may not eventually find a girl himself, but he doesn't appear to be that smooth with the ladies. Even Snoutlout seems to know ladies better than him, and that's saying a lot. Regardless, How to Train Your Dragon 3 does have a lot of relationships and puts a big focus on romance. The overarching theme of the movie is love, after all. Anything could happen in the future. Animation Improvement as well as the story elements, the animation has clearly become so much more advanced and pretty from years ago when the first film released. For example, just by looking at the sand and clouds, it almost looks too real. They would not have been able to pull that off back in the time How to Train Your Dragon 1 came out. The animators on this film have done a very good job with everything. Even the hair on the characters now looks so much more advanced than it did before in 2010. In just a short nine years, DreamWorks was able to heavily improve the animation of this franchise. It's honestly extremely impressive. Just imagine if the How to Train Your Dragon franchise came out 20 years from now. It would be mind-blowing. When you envision how great the animation is going to look by then, this movie would be absolutely astounding. But How to Train Your Dragon 3 is already beautiful enough for us. The animation is great, so we have no complaints. Dragon's New Life since all of the dragons have gone off to be led by the mighty Toothless and his lovely girl Light Fury, we can surely say their lives will be a complete 360. The dragons went off to their own side of the world. Deep within the giant hole at the edge of the waterfall, as the myths have said, even Hiccup's father was searching for this location before his demise, and boy is he missed. Toothless and the Light Fairy even had kids just like Hiccup and Astrid. This movie loves to mirror all the things that happen with the dragons and humans towards the end. Perhaps one day, just like Toothless and Hiccup, their kids can have a similar bond. That would be amazing if one year the story of Hiccup and Toothless's kids come together for a new era of How to Train Your Dragon. Think about it, DreamWorks. We always want more How to Train Your Dragon. The first dragons to actually live without any form of human interaction and even threats would be Toothless's kids. These baby dragons are going to live in such a different world than their parents have lived. They likely won't have to fear being tracked down and hunted by humans considering the large army of dragons they have packed together. Obviously, this changes everything for the life of the dragons. If a day does come around where humans try and head back to tame the dragons again, they might run into an issue. As seen at the end of How to Train Your Dragon 3, Toothless takes a while to realize Hiccup is actually Hiccup. This could have ended much differently if he didn't realize it was his prior best friend. This poses the issue that the dragons may forget what living with humans is like, which in turn changes everything. Hopefully, if the Burkeans ever do return to the lifestyle of having dragons, the dragons will actually remember the years they spent alongside the humans. Burke's New Home Moving on to the last point of the day to prove how everything changes in this movie, let's talk about the location of the village of Burke as it moves entirely in this movie. From the spot it was originally, with Stoic leading everyone to a brand new location that is unlike anything else we have ever seen before. This is a huge lifestyle change for the hundreds of people who live in Burke. Saying goodbye to their home of many years and starting from pretty much scratch would be a humongous change for anyone. But since this is an entire civilization, that makes it even more of a severe change. Without dragons, they're going to have more hardships in their lives than ever. But luckily for them, the majority of Burkeans seem to love their new homes. At first, everyone thought Hiccup was crazy about moving the village to a brand new location. Even Astrid had her doubts. But as she said to Hiccup, she always has his back. How romantic. But back to the point, the thought of moving was absolutely absurd before everyone finally realized it was their only method of surviving. At the end of the day, Hiccup's decision of moving Burke benefited everyone and even led to the survival of the entire population. If they hadn't moved, it's even possible that they would get destroyed by the dragon killers. We're glad that the lovely cast of characters happened to survive all the fights that they have fought throughout the trilogy. Conclusion 
We and many fans think that the DreamWorks trilogy of How to Train Your Dragon films was an absolute masterpiece. Thank you, DreamWorks, for gifting us with these movies. The story truly came full circle at the end and was such a joy to watch. Fans around the world are grateful for these movies, but at the same time, we're all a little bit sad because the third movie is the last one. It was great while it lasted, that's for sure. Hiccup grew up with the rest of us fans, which was a great sight to see. So what was your favorite part of the trilogy? Are you hoping for a series reboot someday with Hiccup's kids alongside Toothless's? Are there any other DreamWorks movies you'd love for us to cover? Leave us a note in the comment section down below and maybe your favorite film will be featured next time. We do have many other videos coming soon, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with Endzone today and we'll see you next time.